Hello, my name is Amir and today I'm going to teach you how to read binary files in C++. Uh, before we begin our discussion, uh, for those who, of you who are not clear what binary files really are, uh, just to give you an idea, just about every file which exists on a computer is a binary file. As a matter of fact, even a text file is a binary file, although you can open it up in a text editor and read its contents, but in a sense it's still a binary file because it is made up of a sequence of zeros and ones. Just to give you an example, I'm going to open up a file which I'm going to read in C++, read the information from the C++, but before I, just, before I begin I just need to give you a brief look as to what a binary file looks like inside a hexadecimal editor. Um, so uh, let me just bring up the hexadecimal editor and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a file in my case the file I'm trying to open is an AVI file this one and uh, what we look at here are series of hexadecimal numbers. For those who do not, of you who do not know what hexadecimal numbers are, essentially uh, they are, are a representation of normal decimal numbers except for the fact that they are a base 16 um, number as opposed to uh, normal decimals which are uh, base 9 or base 10 numbers. Uh, what I meant was like in, in, in hexadecimal number information is represented as 0 to 9 and 10 becomes A, 11 becomes B and why would somebody want to do it? Just to give you a brief uh, introduction, the reason is space. You can basically represent a longer integer, a longer number uh, in a shorter memory address uh, because you're writing it in a hexadecimal number and that's why it, it was introduced in the first place. But anyway, this is an AVI file. It's just a, a normal AVI file. And what needs to happen, uh, it is just a sequence of numbers. Now, these numbers essentially mean something. And I'm just going to show you, we'll just give you a very quick example as to what they actually mean. Uh, when binary files are written, they're generally written, uh, they're grouped together in, in the form of data structures. Um, now, AVI file, the reason I chose AVI file is because AVI file goes back to the days of DOS. Basically, it's Microsoft's first attempt to create a, uh, a container file which can hold both audio and video. And uh, the, the structures which define this uh, file are relatively simplistic in nature as opposed to the data structures which define MP3 files or MP4 files. Or, or flash formats, for example, they are very complex files. Essentially, this their format, the 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 basis of their file is exactly the same. Even a even a MPEG-4 file or MPEG-3 file, MP3 file, essentially is a series of bytes. But it's just that the information because it uses compression, it uses uh, predictive uh, frame analysis. Uh, their their internal structure is very complex. And just as an introduction into what binary files really are and uh, and how data is represented I thought I'll start off with something very simplistic in nature uh, which you basically will be able to understand pretty much straight away so let's just get back to our C++ code then I'm going to talk you through it essentially uh, reading a, 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 a binary file is no different from reading a text file uh, it's only in Windows where there is a sort of a implied distinction between a binary file and a text file in Unix. All files are binary files. There is no distinction between a text file or a binary file. And and you shouldn't when you are basically approaching um, the subject of binary file, you should really understand that in essence there is no difference between a binary file and a text file. The only d difference I would say is the text file is also a series of numbers. The only thing is once you open up in a text editor, those numbers just display as uh, alphabets you can understand while if you try to open a binary file in a text editor you might just find strange uh, writings come up 
on the next notepad because the notepad has no idea how to decode that particular file. It can decode a text file basically and read those series of numbers in a text file and, and represent the information in a human readable manner but in a binary file format whether it's an ABI file or executable file it just does not know how things how, how and when things fall into place. So anyway, so we start off uh, with including IOStream, which is a standard uh, uh, C++ uh, header file. Then FStream, which is again in Windows.h uh, for good measure. Um, now this structure uh, basically defines the header of an AVI file. Basically, uh, that this is what, like if you've got a media player like VLC or you're using Windows Media Player, this is what... Uh, that media player when it first loads up the ABI file it's going to read this this structure would tell how to proceed further and um, I'm just going to quickly walk you through because this the, the, the idea of this tutorial is not really to to talk about ABI file structures uh, it's more to how do you read binary information and um, how do you display it onto the screen so the, this structure basically and I've written it down I basically went through the documentation of what an AVI file is and from the documentation I was able to extract this structure uh, you can pause this video and I'm gonna focus it now if you want to make notes or take notes down this basically from the documentation which is available on Microsoft uh, developers network which is MSDN I was pretty much able to extract what an AVI file header file looks like so let me um, um, uh, just quickly talk talk because the things of interest are that uh, when you first read this uh, file the first eight bytes um, I would say first 32 bytes because we are looking at unsigned inches the four into four eights are 32 bytes are reserved which means is that they really don't have any meaning uh, which I can display in this. They have a meaning of course but not something that we should concern ourselves. Next basic basically is an unsigned integer. Unsigned for those who don't know what an unsigned integer is, it's, it's a positive integer basically of 32 bit. It basically telling you, you how many delay, how much delay is there between one frame and another frame basically. So if a player is playing this file between one frame and how much delay should be let's say for example if there are 25 frames per second uh, then the delay between one frame and that is 40 microseconds this basically is that how many bytes per second need to transmit from the file where actual I'm talking about not the header file but I'm talking where the actual audiovisual data is for the for the decoder or the player to construct a co complete image and we won't discuss these basically and the thing is this things like total number of frames which means is that how many video frames are there in total because as you know movies or moving pictures are essentially a collection of still frames they just go through very quickly like 25 or 30 frames per second so they give us the illusion that things are moving inside them and finally we'll just gonna think of interest are uh, what is the width and height of this frame like for example one video frame and this video width and height is in of course pixels so is it uh, are, are something like 800 by 600 or is it 640 by um, uh, 420 and this figure is totally arbitrary in nature whosoever created the AVI file in the first place um, uh, would basically uh, would, would set these values and when the, the file was being created now we'll just go into uh, the main method here and what we do is start off with basically saying that uh, we want to create a, a stream a reader object uh, to read a file stream we pass this sample AVI file into it and this is just the path to that file and the next flag is that we want to be able to read the read it as a binary file and we are reading it in which means if we are not writing because F stream can be used to either read files and write files so in this case we're telling F stream that no we are reading this file in and it's a binary file next what we do is we come back and check if the object of F stream type has been created or not been created properly so if it's not being created there's no point proceeding any further because at the end of the day if you don't have a reader you won't be able to read anything and there's no point continuing with the program so you just basically say return 8 8 in this case is totally arbitrary in nature in a way you can put whatever you like I just put 8 there for good measure next basically you basically create an instance of the structure you just created there and what you do basically is uh, 
uh, create an instance and then call the read method from the fstream class to read and just to let you know that what you need to do is cast a put a pointer of the structure which basically is the end person sign basically is telling that we are putting in a pointer and also cast that pointer into a char type pointer uh, now this is uh, sort of built into the function you have to do it this way and you have to tell how much information do you want to read and we basically want to read the size of the AVI header and once you have read it basically the things of interest for me was that what is the width of the frame versus the height of the frame and what are the total number of frames and uh, just to pause the screen for you I just put in a sleep method from Windows header file basically just pauses the screen because the thread has gone to sleep the current main thread which is running the program just sleeps so I'm gonna just compile it very quickly here and I'm gonna run this program so if you look come here it basically is telling you the width of this particular is 72 720 pixels is the width height is uh, excuse me I'm gonna bring it again <laughs> the height is uh, 540 and the total number of frames within this is 22,318 frames and this is how uh, uh, you basically read uh, uh, binary information now just to let you know that uh, of course this structure and this way of reading this binary is unique to AVI files if you were to read uh, mp3 files of course you need to understand the internal file structure and be able to read information from them in a way that it makes sense for an mp3 file and so on and so forth uh, you can always um, if you like to know something else or, uh, or don't understand um, uh, any of the topics I've outlined you can always put a post on the YouTube where I'm gonna put this video uh, if you want to learn anything else um, uh, do put in a request and if I know if I can do it I'll be more than happy to put make a video and put it out for you uh, in the next week probably if I get time I'm gonna show you how to write um, um, uh, binary files and they are just as I said they're just a mathematical representation of the data aligned in one byte after another byte so they see as I try to show you showed you show you in the hex editor that's what essentially they are uh, this is a presentation of Amir Mirza from ProBasic uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with a video how to write uh, binary files goodbye